Up to this point in class, we've talked about drawing force diagrams for objects which are either at rest or moving on level ground. The question is, well, how do we draw or think about force diagrams for objects which are either at rest or moving on non-level ground? Let's look at a situation where someone is sliding down a slide or an inclined surface. Let's say friction is significant and they're increasing speed. Well, what do we know about uh, objects that are increasing speed? If they're moving in a direction and the speed is increasing, we know that the sum of the forces, no matter what forces are on the object, when we add everything up, the sum of the forces has to point in the same direction the object is moving. So we know the sum of the forces is not in the x direction or not in the y direction. It's kind of in the x and y direction. Or we can see that the sum of the forces is parallel to the incline or the slide surface. So one thing that we do to make drawing force diagrams a little bit easier on inclines Rather than talking about just the normal horizontal and vertical direction, we actually rotate the axes so the x direction is parallel with the, with the inclined surface and the y direction is perpendicular to that surface. So when we draw a force diagram, uh, we're going to draw uh, the x direction being parallel with the slide or the inclined surface and the y direction being perpendicular. Now if we do that, we know that the sum of all the forces, we said, has to be parallel to the slide's direction. So we can say the sum of the forces in our new rotated x direction, or parallel direction, has to be positive. There has to be more forces in the positive x direction than the negative x direction. And since the acceleration is, in our, is parallel to the surface, or in our rotated x direction, that means there's no acceleration or change in velocity in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in our new rotated y direction must be zero. So now that we've defined our axes, and they're a little bit different than what we're used to, let's decide what are the forces that the person feels as they're speeding up moving down the slide. Well, we know gravity acts on the person because the person has mass. And no matter how we define our axes, the force of gravity is always straight down. So we have the force of gravity in the person by the Earth pulling them straight down. Since they're resting on the slide surface and they're kind of compressing the particles and the molecules that they're sitting against, the slide's going to push back up with the normal force. And remember, the word normal means perpendicular. So the normal force is going to be pushing perpendicular to the slide surface. So it's going to be in our new rotated y direction. If friction is significant and they're sliding in the positive x direction, that means friction has to be pushing back against the person in the negative x direction. These are the only significant forces on the person as they're increasing speed in our new positive x direction. So we just said that the sum of the force in the x direction has to be positive, yet we just have one force in the x direction. Uh, and we said the sum of the forces in our new y direction has to be zero, so things have to be balanced. But when we look at our force diagram, we just have one thing in the y direction. Well, this is going to be similar to how we thought about uh, component forces or angled forces. So when we look at this, we have the normal force, which is in the y direction, the frictional forces in the x direction, and the force of gravity, it's not only in the x or only in the y direction. It's kind of like pulling both in the x, x direction and pulling in the y direction at the same time. So let's think about how could we break up the force of gravity into its components, its x component and its y component. Well, let's redraw that our axes over here. Here's our force of gravity that's down. And when we think about it, we could draw this arrow, which represents the x component of gravity, or how much of gravity is trying to pull the person parallel to the slide. And then we could similarly do that for the y direction. So we could draw a dashed line on the y axis. That's kind of like a right triangle right here, which shows how much of gravity is pulling just in the y direction. Now we know gravity is really pulling in one direction, but we can imagine this one force acting like two separate forces, one in the x direction and y, one in the y direction. And we'll label the one in the x direction FGX, which stands for the x component of gravity. And we'll label the component or piece in the y direction FGY, which stands for the y component of gravity. Now similarly, as to our last example, Let's talk about making not just a force diagram, but a component force diagram to see like what things are balanced or 
uh, what things are bigger than other things in terms of forces. So for a component force diagram, we're going to again draw our rotated axes. So remember the x direction is parallel with the surface, the y direction is perpendicular to the surface. And on our component force diagram, remember we're going to draw the actual forces which are only in the x and y direction and any components of forces which are not only in the x and y direction. So we have the normal force and the frictional force. They're both only in the y or the x direction. And since gravity wasn't only in the x or y, we broke it up into its pieces, its x component or piece and its y component or piece. So let's transfer those to our component force diagram. We've got the force of gravity in the x direction and the amount of or the component of gravity in the y direction. Now we can go back to our sum of the forces. In the y direction we said the sum of the forces must be zero and so we know that the normal force and the y component of gravity, those must be balanced. The normal force is not the same size as the actual force of gravity, only the y part of gravity's pull. How much of gravity is pulling it into the slide, not down the slide. When we look back at our, the sum of the forces in the x direction, we said that when everything's added up in the x direction, in this case our rotated x direction, there has to be more force in the positive x direction than the negative x direction. And so uh, we have it drawn correctly showing that the x component of gravity, how much of gravity is trying to pull it in the positive x direction, is larger than the frictional force which is in the negative x direction. Now you might have drawn a force diagram, or we might have drawn it, and initially drawn the force of friction larger than the force of gravity in the x direction. And that's not a big deal. We just have to go back and to make sure to show that the sum of the forces in the x direction points in the positive direction. We could just make the force of friction smaller than the force of gravity in the x or just or makes this larger. So in the end we just need to make sure that our component force diagram is consistent with what we know is true about the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. When we look at our net force equations, remember this is just going to be writing out what are the forces or components of forces which we're adding together in the x direction, which has to add up to a positive value. So we have the positive x component of gravity and the negative frictional force added together must be positive in the end because it's speeding up in the positive x direction. In the y direction, we just have two things that we're adding together. We've got the negative y component of gravity plus the positive normal force. And when those are added together, we said that sum must be zero, which is how we know that these two things are the same size. So this is the first force diagram we've seen for objects on an incline. Using this knowledge, you guys now should be able to draw force diagrams for lots of different situations. Before you go and practice that, let, let's look at just a few scenarios just to talk about like how would we draw our axes, our rotated axes for a force diagram on an incline. So here's a couple situations where just I'm imagining, let's say there's a Jeep or a truck that's like hauled in on helicopters on cables and then it moves down a steep incline, it's moving on a flat ground, and then uh, let's say it's on not quite as steep of an incline. And we're not going to draw the force diagrams for these in all these situations, but just think about like how would we draw our x and y directions? Well, we only rotate the x and y directions if an object is moving or at rest on a non-level surface. So for situation number one, where the Jeep is, let's say, hanging by two ropes, we would draw the x and the y direction like normal, x being horizontal and y being vertical. With the Jeep kind of sliding down this steep incline, remember the x direction has to be parallel to the surface and the y direction has to be perpendicular. Situation number three, it's on flat ground, so x and y directions are normal. And for situation number four, again, if it's on an inclined surface or the surface is not level, just make sure you sketch the x direction parallel with the surface and the y direction perpendicular. You can see that it's rotated not quite as much because this isn't quite as steep of an incline. Hopefully this helps as you guys now practice drawing force diagrams for objects that are either at rest or moving in some way on an incline.